So this property of unitary matrices is very cool because it says that all the eigenvalues of a unitary matrices lie on the boundary of a complex unit circle. It implies that we have a circle and the circle is unit circle because its radius is equal to 1. And the circle has a, a two axes uh, going through it. So we have uh, a imaginary axis. So we have here iota and we have here minus iota and we have a real axis. So uh, we have here a 1 and we have here a minus 1. So we're, we are saying that all the eigenvalues of our unitary matrices lie on this circle. Whereas uh, all the eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices lie on this uh, real line. So uh, Hermitian matrices eigenvalues lie on the real line. Uh, in this video, I will prove uh, that eigenvalues of uh, unitary matrices lie on the complex unit circle. In the next video, I will prove that eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices are real. So a question can be asked that if a matrix is uh, both uh, uh, unitary and Hermitian, then what kind of eigenvalues that matrix will have? So answer this question is quite straightforward uh, that such a matrix will have values uh, which is uh, intersection of the ranges of uh, eigenvalues of unitary matrices and eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices. So in this case, uh, if we have a matrix which is let's say A, uh, which is uh, both uh, unitary and Hermitian, then it's eigenvalues will be uh, intersection of range of eigenvalues of unitary matrices and a range of eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices. So we know that eigenvalues of unitary matrices lie on this circle. And we know that eigenvalues of Hermitian matrices lie on this line, real line. And you can see that this the circle and the line meet only on two points. Therefore, our answer will be uh, these two points. So eigenvalues of a matrix which is both unitary and Hermitian uh, could only be either 1 or minus 1. Before I start the proof that eigenvalues of unitary matrices uh, lie on uh, the boundary of the complex unit circle. Uh, let's revise some of the basic concepts about complex numbers. We know that a complex number is represented like uh, with a real part and with an imaginary part. And we can also write a complex number using trigonometric functions. So this is equals to uh, r uh, cos theta uh, plus iota r sine theta. And we can also write complex numbers using Euler equation. So this is equals to uh, Euler constant, uh, sorry, r times Euler constant raised to power i theta. Uh, in this case, uh, the value of r is equals to absolute value of complex number. And this is equals to a scale root of x plus iota y conjugate times uh, x plus iota y. And if we solve this, then, uh, we, uh, then the value of r will be equals to x square uh, plus y square. In contrast to that, value of theta is equal to tan uh, inverse uh, y over x. So let's do an example. In this example, we have two complex numbers and we have to write those complex numbers using uh, three, these three equal notations. So we have here a unit circle and we have uh, two axes 
and I have to write this complex number and I have to write this complex number uh, using these notations. Uh, the angle of this complex number is uh, 45 degrees and angle for this complex number is 90 degree. So uh, first let's write this complex number. In this case, uh, uh, this line will be equals to sine theta. So this distance is equals to sine theta, where this distance is equals to cos theta. So a point here, remember that our radius is one. So I'm not write, writing radius here because r is equals to one. So this point here is equals to uh, cos uh, 45 degrees plus uh, sine, uh, sorry, iota times sine uh, 45 degrees and our radius is equal to one. So uh, cos uh, 45 degrees plus iota uh, sine uh, 45 degrees uh, can be simplified by putting the values of uh, cos 45 and sine 45. So it will be equals to uh, one over square root of two uh, plus iota one over square root of two. And we can also write in, in terms of Euler equation. So this will be equals to uh, Euler constant uh, raised to power i iota times theta, which is uh, pi by four. We usually write um, in radian form uh, angle when we're using Euler constant. So now uh, let's uh, write this point here. We know this point is iota by the way. So let's write this point using these three equations and see if this point is indeed equal to iota or not. So in this case, we have uh, cos uh, 90 uh, plus iota sine 90 for this point. And we know that cos 90 is equals to zero and sine 90 is equals to one. So that means this is equals to uh, uh, iota because cos 90 will be zero, sine 90 is equal to one. So this is equals to iota. And similarly, we can write it in terms of uh, Euler constant, which is um, E um, Euler constant uh, raised to power uh, iota and pi by uh, two, which is once again will be equals to iota. So now we are ready to uh, start with our proof. So our actual proof is quite simple. It is based upon the fact that uh, unitary matrices preserve a uh, norm of vectors. I have already proved this in a previous video whose link will be somewhere here. So let's start our proof. So uh, we have an eigenvalue uh, lambda and corresponding eigenvector is cat uh, psi. Then by definition of eigenvectors and eigenvalue, uh, we can say that a unitary matrix uh, times eigenvector will be equals to eigenvalue times eigenvector. This is by definition. So now we want to use the fact that unitary matrices preserve norm. So uh, unitary matrices preserve norm or length of vectors. It implies that a uh, norm of cat um, uh, psi um, before the unitary transformation uh, must be equal to norm of cat psi after the unitary transformation. And this is equals to uh, lambda times cat psi. So now we can expand these equations. We have here a uh, square root of uh, dot product of uh, cat psi with cat psi. And we have here a uh, square root of a uh, dot product of um, a conjugate of lambda and cat psi, conjugate transpose of lambda and cat psi times uh, 
lambda and cat psi. If we simplify these equations further, we will get here uh, cat psi times cat psi and we will have on the uh, left hand side uh, square root of bra uh, cat, uh, bra psi times uh, conjugate of uh, lambda times lambda times cat psi. It is because when we apply uh, conjugate transpose operation, then the order of uh, uh, these uh, will change and each term will be conjugate transported uh, individually. So we will get this one. And we want to take out uh, this complex number, which is uh, lambda uh, conjugate times lambda and by the rules of inner product we can take this uh, number out without any changes so we will get here uh, lambda conjugate times lambda times dot product of cat psi with cat psi so what we have here is uh, in short uh, dot product of uh, cat psi with cat psi square root equals to um, uh, lambda uh, uh, conjugate uh, times lambda times door product of cat psi with cat psi and this thing here is equals to uh, absolute value of lambda so this thing here is, is basically telling us that how far is eigenvalue uh, from the uh, center of the circle because the absolute value of a uh, complex number tells us that what is the radius of um, remember we have told you I've told you previously that radius is equal to absolute value of complex number so in this case absolute value of lambda is telling us that how far is eigenvalue from the center of the circle so we have here a uh, cat psi times a uh, cat psi and we have here also a uh, um, same thing so the left hand side will be equal to right hand side uh, if and only if uh, the absolute value of lambda is equal to 1 that means that uh, 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 lambda conjugate transpose times lambda square root is equal to 1 and this basically proves that uh, eigenvalues uh, must lie on the complex unit circle. So basically we have here a complex circle and we have here an eigenvalue lambda and this uh, the radius of this eigenvalue uh, is absolute value of lambda uh, which we have proved that will always be equals to 1 thus all the eigenvalues of unity matrices must lie on this complex circle complex unit circle. So that is it for this video. See you next time.